Welcome to another exciting episode of Knife Chats with Tobias, Almost Live. This episode was recorded in front of a live studio audience. Well, it was recorded in front of a live cat. Any case, hope you enjoy the show. Welcome to the uh, May 2021 edition of Knife Chats with Tobias, Almost Live. Kitty and I are here to share some exciting news with you. Um, we are seriously considering and actually working on getting a members area set up. Um, this is all on Kitty's part. That's why uh, one of the clubs that you can join is the Kitty Club. The other club that you'll be able to join will be known as the Volcano Club. Right, Kitty? Right? She's very shy today. In any case, um, that's on its way and we hope to have that launch sometime in June. Uh, we're still working on a lot of the details and the big thing about it is if we're going to do it, we want to do it right and we want to make sure that if you're going to be giving us money monthly, that you're getting your money's worth out of that deal. So we're working on all that, right Kitty? Yeah. So uh, we'll see how that goes. Uh, and. Uh, uh, it's, uh, it's a little scary jumping into that because it means a lot more content uh, just for the members um, and uh, well, we're still working on that and we got to make sure that we're going to be able to do it and do it right. We don't want to do it once the word half asked. Yeah, we want to do it right if we're going to do it. If you're going to be giving us money, we want to make sure you're getting your money's worth. On another side note though, uh, back in April, want to get down Kitty? Back in April, um, we had mentioned starting off the Almost Lives with a, a fixed blade segment. Right, Kitty? Yeah? You want to come back? She's being undecided right now. Well, we were talking about doing a fixed blade section, um, but we have changed our mind. There was a lot of uh, interest in it. But instead, what we're going to be doing is doing another fixed blade, another six, another fixed blade Friday night. Hey, it's almost live. I'm going to stumble over words. So what we're doing instead is another fixed blade Friday night. And so we're hoping to get it up to at least twice a month, but it'll, it'll at least be once a month that we will feature some kind of fixed blade knife. Uh, we kicked this off on April 30th, and on that one I showed my Mark II fighting knife, my Camillus knife that a lot of people call it K-Bar, but it's not a K-Bar. K-Bar is a knife company. And since then we've also shown my uh, Case Ridgeback uh, Hunter, which is a really nice knife in Rosewood. And the next one that will be coming up is a big one. Be showing off a kukri, and that'll be showing up pretty soon. Might have already shown up, I don't know. Uh, I don't know how this is all going to air, but you will be seeing fixed blades, but not at the beginning of, um, of Almost Live. Uh, there will occasionally be a fixed blade on Almost Live, but they're not going to continuously be on Almost Live, they're going to be um, occasionally there but we will be showing at least one or two fixed blades a month on Friday nights and another fixed blade Friday night. Uh, is, do we have any other uh, news that we have to announce, Kitty? No? She's trying to keep me on track because we always go over on these things and uh, she doesn't like me to do that. So what I'm going to do now is uh, Turn this camera around, get over to the bench, and we'll start another fix up, uh, another fix play Friday night. No, and I'll turn the camera around and we'll start Knife Chats almost live for May 2021. All right, all right, don't rush me. She's got food and everything, but no, she's just got to bug me. You want to say goodbye? Say goodbye. Goodbye. Okay. So as we segue over to the bench, I thought I would start off by talking about a, a large toothpick that I just picked up from Frost. It's not this one here. I've actually shown this one before. 
but it is a large toothpick with a pack of wood handle and I wanted to show that but before I did that I thought maybe I should talk a little bit about pack of wood and just what in the world pack of wood is uh, I know a lot of people know already um, but basically uh, there is no such thing as a pack of trees so where does pack of wood come from and quite frankly pack of wood can be almost any kind of wood imaginable so for instance I talked a little bit about this uh, knife already the uh, case Ridgeback Hunter uh, with the rosewood handle and this is a rosewood handle but it is also a type of pack of wood if you can notice there's numerous layers going on there which gives you this vibrant uh, looking handle on the top here and that's because what pack of wood is is basically a series of laminated pieces of wood so very thin strips of wood uh, that have been impregnated with a resin and then pressed together under enormous pressure which re, uh, results in uh, heat so that the wood and the resin all basically kind of fuse together making a very solid wood handle so in many ways pack of wood is kind of like the micarta of wood handles it's sort of a man-made material but it's a man-made material made from resin and a natural material in this case wood and so you see a variety of different kinds of uh, pack of wood here including my turtle man lightning here and i really got to do a video on this knife i will this has got to show up on my another uh fixed blade friday night because i really like this knife and there's a little bit of a history behind it but this is basically a pack of wood handle. You notice the various layers going on there. And because of the swells and everything, you end up with these wonderful colors going on. And that's uh, what you can have with the pack of wood handles. And that's how Jim Frost creates his frost wood. Because basically what he has done is he has dyed the various laminated layers, different colors. In this case, there's this reddish brown, a green, and a gold and then another green and a reddish brown and everything. If you notice, it goes on forever and ever here. Uh, and basically when you sand it down, you end up with all these various layers and uh, he calls it frost wood. Uh, so that is his trademark for his uh, multicolored laminated pack of wood handles. Um, but as you can see here, this is one by Baron Son. This is my Baron Son Barlow. And uh, it does the same thing. Um, the difference is this is just a multicolored pack of wood as opposed to this one, which is frost wood. Um, they're both basically a pack of wood handle using multicolored uh, wood. And sometimes you'll have, as in this old Remington that was made by Camillus, uh, you notice you've got basically two colors going on here. You've got the, uh, well, actually maybe three. You've got the natural brown, a little bit of a red and a black. Uh, to create this other pack of wood handle going on here and I think that's the joys of pack of wood is that uh, simply because of the the thin layers of wood that you have if you dye them different colors and everything you can make some really striking looking handles and even if the wood uh, and they usually will if you notice they will have two different shades going on a darker and a lighter is the most common uh, which gives you these wonderful uh, different lines going on there and you kind of create a um, a wood grain without actually having to have a wood grain um, and the last one here is this one is sometimes called silver wood or something and this is like a gray and a black wood and they're basically dyed that way to create again different color um, wood handles and um, just for giggles the Rough Rider um, Denim Micarta work knife uh, that everyone uh, swoons over and is really worthy of swooning uh, does basically the same kind of practice. They use different shades of micarta. Uh, so you've got a black and a blue there to give this wonderful grain going on, similar to what you see in the frost wood. 
and you can also do this with G10 and everything else. And and so that's really what pack of wood is, though. It is just basically thin layers of wood that have been resin impregnated, um, pressed together over with steam and pressure, and it just ends up bonding into this material that is actually tougher than natural wood. Okay, and with that said, let me get out my latest pack of wood handled uh, large toothpick. And this is from Frost & Company. Okay, entering from stage left is my latest Frost pack of wood toothpick. And here we have it. And there you can see the wonderful grain in the pack of wood. And as I back out and continue to back out and continue to back out, I think you realize that when I said large toothpick, I really meant large toothpick. All right, let me pull the camera up a bit so that we can actually feature this a little bit better. We're talking about eight inches closed. How about that compared to the five inch toothpick? Let's go ahead and open up the five inch toothpick, which is nine inches long overall. Yeah, we're talking a pretty substantial toothpick here, considering it has a six inch blade. Something that doesn't quite fit into frame. Uh, and I think that's why I also decided to turn around and go to the bench. Just so you could see, this thing is ginormous. And guess what? Listen to that. And that's not hitting the back. And it is nice and tight. Uh, wonderful little pack of wood handles. And you know what? The build on this is not bad at all. You do have a uh, stainless steel liners going on and a stainless steel back spring and I don't know if it's nickel silver bolsters or not. You do see brass pins going on though and uh, fairly decent action. I have not cleaned it at all yet. These are the knives that were considered, um, what are they, um, display models for stores and stuff. So you'd put it out for display. And that might be what I end up doing, is using it as a display model. Go look at that. That does kind of look cool as a display model. But you can see just how ginormous it is once you put it next to a 5-inch toothpick. And, uh, well, I will do a more thorough review of this knife, but I just wanted to show it here uh, in my uh, uh, May Almost Live. Uh, so we'll look at this a little bit more in detail later. Uh, but talk about a big honking knife. My first ever display knife. I know a lot of people are talking about that Rough Rider Trapper that was 8 inches. I don't care. I got me an 8 inch toothpick. And it's big, it's heavy, and it's ginormous. I got, this one came in ginormous. This is my ginormous toothpick. In any case, let's move on to something else. And now for a brief word from our sponsors. The strong survive. The weak fall by the wayside. Don't be the weak. Subscribe to Chuck Muldoon School of Survival on YouTube. We now return to our show. Okay, so I got an interesting knife in this little red box here. Again, uh, overpackaged, but interesting, and I will get around to that in just a second. But before I do that, I want to talk about these two knives here. This is the, uh, I think this is the RR573. Yeah, RR573. So this is the red jig bone uh, camp knife. And that makes this one, I believe, the RR-533. 
yeah, RR 533 um, Amber Jig Bone Cap Knife by Rough Rider. Now these are based off of an old case knife that had the funky uh, uh, can opener, you know, the triangular can opener. And the reason I really like this is because this can opener makes a terrific box cutter. You can open a can with it, but um, I don't need the can opener nearly as much as I need a box cutter, and this works great as a box cutter. Uh, but the reason I was bringing these out is they are becoming more and more difficult to find. Um, I just, uh, I've been looking for a red jig bone one for quite some time and finally ended up getting a second one. This is the uh, one I had for a while. Uh, and the thing is, is I actually had two of these at one time, one of each of, you know, two of the amber jig bone and two of the red jig bone. And, uh, well, I gave away the uh, amber jig bone one. And then for the red jig bone one, because Rough Rider wasn't going to make one in white smooth bone, I went ahead and popped off the uh, the scales or the covers, if you want, the covers off of um, a red jig bone one and made my own white smooth bone one. Um, but in any case, the reason I was bringing this up is because these are becoming as scarce as hen's teeth. The red jig bone are very difficult to find right now, but the amber jig bone ones are still out there on eBay, and they're selling at a decent price, somewhere between $16 and $18, which is not a bad price at all, considering uh, these were, when they first came out, going for about $12, and that was a good 10 years ago or so. Uh, and these are just stellar knives. Uh, notice the brass uh liners going on there and the spacers and the nice thick uh, stainless steel uh, back springs and you got a nice thick blade going on there with it too if you can see that all of the tools are really nice and notice the lines there much nicer than what you see on the camp king so here's the uh, camp king notice how all the tools fit in there and everything it's just a much nicer much uh, more elegant knife this is built like a tank. This is built more like, you know, maybe, well, can't say it's built like a Ferrari or anything, but the lines are much nicer than this one. Uh, and it's thinner and everything else. So I, if you're a person in the scout knives or camp knives, um, this is one of those that you really do want to just go ahead and grab if you haven't got one already. Um, and I tell you, this can opener, just, I, I find myself using that so much more often than I do the can opener on here. Yeah, this knife has the half stops. Okay, cool. It's got the half stops. This one doesn't have the half stops, but still, it's just a fantastic little knife. And the coloration on it is just beautiful. The amber jig bone is uh, is my favorite over the red jig bone, but uh, these are the red jig bone is just very hard to find these days. The amber jig bone is still out there. Uh, I have a second red jig bone, which has the older propeller shield, uh, which is much more difficult to find than this one. But both of these are just getting harder and harder to find, and. Um, now uh, I'm going to basically get another amber jig bone one uh, ordered before this even airs simply because if I don't, chances are they're just going to disappear. Like I said, they're really getting more and more difficult to find. The only place I see them now is on, on eBay. Uh, they have been out of stock forever at SMKW. My bet is they're not coming back simply because, well, they've introduced the Camp King uh, and they're going they're putting their money behind that so if you see a scout knife come out again uh, from SMKW my bet is it's going to be on the Camp King frame and um, to me the Camp King is not as well made as this knife is for one thing this uh, cap lifter here that one works no matter what kind of beer bottle you have and uh, this one, because of the way it is bent, it doesn't fit every beer bottle. This one just has the proper spacing and everything. It works so much better than this one does. So another reason to uh, 
consider grabbing this one before you grab a Camp King. Um, any case, I'm going to move on from my Rough Rider Camp Knives to a couple other knives I've got here. And then I'll get to this red box here. Um, this one is the... Uh, this is an earlier um, uh, Marbles Cattle Knife. And you can see there, Cattle Knife. Uh, this is one in the brown uh, stag bone, and I really like it. You got the wonderful shield going on there. One of the complaints I've heard about this knife over and over is if you notice the front blade here, the front pin blade, which is really a nice little blade, got the little swedge going on there and everything else. See the swedge both sides. Uh, one of the complaints I hear is that this blade rests too high for you to easily get to the uh, to the nail nick on the back blade here uh, on the newer knives. I don't know if that's the problem or not. I, you saw I got to it pretty easy, but you can see that it is pretty close. Um, but the thing is, is even with it being that close, again, wonderful swedge on the blade. I will eventually get to what I wanted to talk about. One of the things I wanted to say is, um, Often what you can do uh, when this blade is sitting up a little too high is you can uh, kind of sand down the little kick here. But there is no kick here, so you can't sand it down, uh, which becomes a problem uh, because you think, well, then I can't get to the back blade. But the thing is, is you're looking at this all wrong because this blade has quite a bit of give in it and so if even if you got a really big finger or something and you're trying to get to that kick and uh, or the the nail nick on the back there you can do it because if watch watch what happens see what happens i just push down and that other blade disappears and it gives me a little bit of an assist when i'm pulling this blade out so yeah i have the ability to just reach behind there and grab it some people they're going to have bigger monster hands and they're going to say that's in the way. Well, it's really not in the way because the blade pushes down, comes right out of it. So it's not a problem at all, at least on the Cattle King. Now, on the Rough Rider uh, three and a half inch Barlows, we're talking a different story. Now, here's my uh, Rough Rider Brown Stag Bone uh, Barlow. And if you notice, this blade does have a substantial kick and it does hit the back spring the kick does and pushing down on that blade is much more problematic it is resting on the back spring you cannot press that down at all you do have some give in the back blade but not or, or in the main blade but there is absolutely no give there uh, fortunately with this one I, that I have I have enough room to grab it I know other people have problems getting to it. I, the size of, and notice, I do not have a long fingernail. I, I keep my fingernails short. And quite frankly, I find it much easier to open uh, knives with the uh, nail nicks if the fingernail is actually short. A longer fingernail does not work as well as a short fingernail. So, uh, you see, I can get to it with very little problem, but I know other people have an issue with it. And I think part of it is you just have to get used to opening the knife. Um, the option here would be to hit the, 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 uh, the kick a little bit and lower that blade. But you have to be very careful on this knife because quite frankly, I have a little more issue reaching the front blade than I do the back blade. But as you can tell, and I can actually do this with my eyes closed. My eyes are closed right now. I can feel where the nick is and I can open it. Eyes closed or not. I can do this all day. So I don't think it's nearly the big of an issue as a lot of people make it out to be. It is there uh, and I guess it really depends on the individual. If the individual is more interested in a higher uh, pronounced nick, then uh, they they uh, well they're they're not going to be satisfied with these Barlows no matter what. 
but I don't find it nearly as much of an issue as a lot of people make it out to be. Um, here is a smaller one. Uh, this one is by U.S. Classics, and this one, again, has a front blade that does have some give, which means it's easier to get to that back blade. This one is a smaller knife, and uh, haven't opened it in a while. Does have the kick, so it could be dropped a bit. But again, I don't really have an issue. Um, so I know for some people it's going to be a problem. For me, it's not too much of a problem. I think really a lot of it is you just got to get used to the knife. And you can't get used to the knife unless you use the knife. I will get to this red box, but first I wanted to talk about a couple little knives I got here. Kind of oddities. Um, and the first one is right here. This is a knife called a Christie knife. Um, I had never heard of Christie, uh, Christie knives. Uh, they were made in Fremont, Ohio. And you see there, Christie trademark, bat pending. And, uh, and then you see this little doohickey here. And what it is, is it basically slides out the front. Uh, it is a two-hand operation. I don't. You can pull it back in, I guess. Um, but pushing it out really does kind of require two hands, and it's kind of like works kind of like a box cutter, an open uh, frame box cutter, with a nice long blade there going on. Um, uh, I picked one up. Uh, I saw it on eBay, and I after somebody said they collect Christie knives, I was like, I never heard of Christie knives, so I had to go and check it out. And so I bought one, not in the world's greatest shape, but uh, it does work, and it's kind of interesting. You slide it out, you cut. Obviously, you can't push with it, because if you push with it, it closes back down. Um, and got a little key ring there, so you can hang it from your key ring. But this one is probably not in the world's greatest shape, so I would not trust it on my key ring, because I'm afraid it would slide out. You do see that the tip is coming out a little bit. Uh, but you can actually adjust that a little bit with these screws on the back. Here's the other information it shows on the back there. Um, have I got it right? Made in USA by Christy of Fremont, Ohio. So that's my uh, Christy knife. I don't know if I'll be picking up other ones. Uh, if they're all this size, probably not. But if I could get a larger one in better shape, at a decent price, heck yeah, who wouldn't want a little Christie knife? Anyway, that's one of the funky knives I got. The other is one of these little flippy kind of knives, and this one is from the Gulf Tex Drug Company Incorporated, Houston, Texas, compliments of, okay. Saw this, and it's like, well, I don't have one of these, and I should go ahead and buy one and see just what it's like and I got it at a really low price so I grabbed one and it's one of those things that spin around and then you open it up um, and I've seen these listed as German uh, Nazi special forces knives and all sorts of stuff I don't know I don't know anything about these knives I'm gonna have to find out a little bit about them and uh, do a, a more extensive video on them but I uh, I figured, what the heck, I can get one. I thought it was going to be a little bit bigger than what I got. Um, this one is only three inches long closed, and it's got a blade that's about two or so inches, two and a half inches. But it is kind of fun. You know, it's something to, to fidget with, I guess. Uh, and it does lock the blade. Once you, once you get it out, it's pretty much locked in place. Still, though, you just got that single pivot point going on there. So if that pivot point breaks, then you're out of luck. But it does look substantial in the way that the blade is locked into there, if you notice. You've got a, a very thick sandwich of steel going on there. And it looks like it's got a couple pins holding it in place. So, and then you see where the blade. If you want to talk about centering, well, the blade is centered. In any case, uh, that was one of the, I don't know what these are called, flip knives or something like that. Uh, I know people who collect these kind of things too. Um, I bought in, I bought both of these simply because they're kind of oddities and you know I collect odd knives and these are definitely some odd ones. 
So let's look at what's in this red box here, which uh, is probably going to be anticlimactic. Probably should have started off with it. Knife Chats with Tobias, in partnership with the DGE BAB Foundation, brings you this brief public service announcement. Howdy, boys and girls! It's your old pals, Yakima Bob and Jackalope Jake. And we're back at you again with the good folks from the Don't Get Eaten by a Bear Foundation. And you know what we're doing today? We're going on a picnic. Because Jackalope Jake and me, we love our picnics. Right, Jake? Thanks, Bob. Yeah, I knew you'd agree. But you know what? We've been seeing a lot of them uh, documentaries about bears and picnic baskets. And we know that bears are smarter than your average picnic basket. And that's got us concerned. Because you know what? Neither Jake nor me can outrun a bear. And we don't want to be eaten by a bear. But you know what? We can outrun our picnic basket. So if a bear wants our picnic basket, he's going to have that instead of us for lunch. Because we're going to leave our picnic basket behind and we're going to hightail it out of there. Right, Jake? Thanks, Bob. What do you say, Jake? Let's hit it. Public service announcement was brought to you by the Don't Get Eaten by a Bear Foundation in partnership with Knife Chats with Tobias. Don't get eaten by a bear! Okay, the anticlimactic red box. First, it's a not a bad little box. It's a little wooden box, and I will probably use it for something. I don't know what. Uh, it has a knife in it, uh, like I said, over packaging. And uh, it's one of those things like, why in the world were you bidding on eBay late at night? And why in the world did you bother to bid on this knife? But you probably know why I bid on it as soon as I open up. And that is Red Rider and Little Beaver. Uh, but here's the reason why it's like, why did you bother bidding on it? Because it is like a Franklin Mint, one of those, one of those kind of Franklin Mint knives, you know. They got the uh, the funky bolsters and then the plastic handles going on. And they're cheap knives. They really are. And they're overpriced knives. And, um, and I got to tell you, I paid too much for this. And I didn't even pay that much for it, but I paid too much for it. Uh, and it is a Novelty Knife Company knife. Uh, stainless China. And you see here when it came out. Uh, 21 years ago, 2000, copyright 2000, SMKW, Red Rider Enterprises. So, the knife is 21 years old, never been used because whoever got it probably thought, oh, that's nice, uh, thanks, son, and put it right in his uh, desk drawer, and it's been there ever since, and that's probably where this is going to go. Um, but it is part of my Red Rider collection, and I guess that's why I ended up getting it. As for these knives, um, yeah, it's a nice little lock back, and it does lock, and it holds, uh, it holds tight. You notice nothing, no scratches on this or anything. Red Rider, uh, just a pad stamping. Actually, it's slightly raised, so that is going to definitely rub off. Uh, so I don't know how well it was stamped in there, but I can uh, guess that it has never been used because. There are no lines running through the Red Rider, so definitely something that somebody either cherished or ignored, one of the two. Um, the plastic handles, no scratches or anything else on them either, so you see a little bit of shelf wear on it. But So I guess I should really be happy. I've got basically a mint condition 21-year-old Red Rider folding hunter, 4-inch folding hunter. And actually, 
you know, it's got that 420 steel blade going on with it. Does it cut? Let's see if it cuts. Even if it doesn't, it's probably me. There you go, yeah. I guess it cuts. Not the best cutter in the world, but then again, a lot of that has to do with me trying to cut paper on camera, which is why I never do it. Let's, yeah. Still, I wouldn't want to be poked with it because I tell you what, it does have a point there, and so it can definitely poke people and it could definitely cut people. So you got to be careful with it. Um, I suppose it could be sharpened. It's probably 420 steel. Uh, that would be my bet. And you got plastic handles that are, might have some little guiding pins on there that are, is glued on to. Uh, you can see the fit and finish is not the world's greatest. Uh, but yeah, there you have it. Told you it was a bit anticlimactic. But uh, if you're a Red Rider fan, well, I found one that I never saw before. And so that's why I went ahead and picked it up. Uh, any case, uh, told you it was anticlimactic. Let's move on to something a little more interesting. But first, I'm going to clear everything away. Even the big old toothpick. Okay, it took me about five or ten minutes to get these uh, advertising skills off my classic SD so I could put on a, a new pair of uh, skills. But, um... Can someone tell me how I get the new scales on? I, I'm not clear on that part. You know, it's crazy that um, Victorinox can put a cap lifter on a 58 millimeter knife that is actually going to function better than what several other companies put on um, larger knives. And they will not actually open a bottle of beer. So yeah, the cap lifter on your little 58 millimeter Rambler is gonna work better than say the cap lifter on the Marbles GI knife, which looks much bigger, and also on your Rough Rider Camp King. Is that not crazy? That this little doohickey here works better than those cap lifters. But trust me, I've used them all and this one works better than these do. Well, by now you probably realize we've entered the Swiss Army knife portion of Almost Live. And, uh, well, so far all you've seen is a little knife, the Rambler. And now you're seeing this knife, which you've already seen before, which is Lucky Cat for 2021. Uh, the reason I'm breaking that out is because, well, guess what? All I've got to show you this time are some uh, small knives, a couple by uh, Victor Knox and a couple by Wenger. So 58 millimeters and 65 millimeters. And one of them is associated with this knife. So I thought I would break that one out first. And remember, this was Lucky Cat. This was the 2021 limited edition. I just recently did a video on that. Uh, I will try and link that below so you can go and check it out if you're into the 58 millimeter limited edition knives because I showed all of the ones for 2021 in that episode. This is the only one I have picked up so far. But I had mentioned and I had shown several of uh, the Victorinox cat-related uh, classic SDs, and I mentioned that I wanted to get a couple more, and I have since got the one that I really, really wanted to get, and that was the 2016 Kokeshi, um, which is also uh, one that is kind of related to Japan. Well, not kind of, very much related to Japan because the Kokeshi is a Japanese doll um, that basically doesn't have any 
hands or feet. So it's just the body and a head with all the designs uh, basically cut into the body. And well, this is a an idea of what a Kokeshi would look like. Um, I might have to do a video on this one later. Um, I don't know. But in any case, the reason I kept it or wanted it is because you see on the back there, you have another Manake Neko or Lucky Cat. And so that's why I wanted it. And you see, and so it's a great addition to my cat themed um, Victorinox knives. Also a great companion for the 2021 uh, Lucky Cat because, well, another Lucky Cat. So let's just set those up there and move on to a couple other um, small uh, Swiss Army knives. And the next one up is actually going to be one from Wenger. Um, and unfortunately, this is one that Victorinox didn't pick up, but should pick up. Matter of fact, they should pick up both of these knives. Now the first is the Wenger Swiss Clipper AT. AT standing for air travel. And this is just a fantastic um, knife by uh, Wenger. If you can find one, this is one you'll probably want to try and grab. First of all, it does have the nail clippers in there because, well, it's for clipping nails. And it does work. And let's get it out. I will say the nail clippers are not the easiest to deploy. Uh, but they do come out eventually. You see their banger on the back. And the way they work is you flip this over and then you have your nail clippers. And yes, they do work. Unfortunately, I don't need to clip my nails right now. And then the other tools on here, well, on the back side, you have a nail file with a uh, nail cleaner. And I like that style of nail file. And then on this side, you have the scissors. And these are the Wenger scissors. Uh, I go back and forth on which ones I like better. Um, but these have that lever, and this lever it tends to fail less often than the uh, the spring. However, once that uh, lever fails, it, it's pretty much toast. And the other tool on here is what makes this air travel instead of just your typical nail clipper uh, knife by Wenger. And that is this blade right here. And it is the micro screwdriver or um, the one for your uh, eyeglasses. And so, and that is really cool. And I wish this blade would find its way onto um, Victorinox knives, such as the Jet Setter and everything else, because uh, if you don't have a cutting blade, this is a terrific blade to have. Now, this is actually the second one of these that I bought. Uh, the first one I bought, well, let me show it to you. So I bought this one several years ago because I saw it and it's like, man, that is a, a really cool little knife. And I can definitely use that in my fishing gear because what I did was I took the... Uh, the little nail file and I turned it into a nice little point so that I can clean out uh, the paint from uh, fish hook guys and stuff like that and uh, so I made a little point out of the screwdriver and you see the difference there and it wasn't hard to do or anything I mean I just basically took a file and filed it down on both ends to get it nice and pointy and uh, it really works good for a cleaning gook out of off, uh, out of the um, um, the eyes on uh, fish hooks and stuff like that. So I can keep my lures nice and clean and stuff. And uh, then after I went and did all that, well, what happens? Uh, Wenger totally goes out of business, uh, and Victorinox says that they're not going to be making these basically anymore so I had to rush out and get one right away these are still available uh, but they are getting very expensive and hard to find and most of them have like a translucent pink uh, scale on them which I'm not at all crazy about uh, and if you do notice it does have um, 
toothpick and tweezers. So has all the devices. The only difference is, is just does not have a main blade. It's got that really cool screwdriver. Let's move on to a Victorinox knife that uh, you just don't come across too often. Yeah, the Victorinox whistle knife. And uh, it's actually a pretty good whistle considering the size of the knife that it is on. Now, Wenger also makes one, but they have one on an 85 millimeter frame. It takes up a whole lot more room. And, uh, well, the basic history of this knife is, um, according to the um, SAC Wiki, uh, a company out in uh, California wanted to uh, get an emergency sounding device built into a knife um, for survival situations. And the idea was to basically have a button or something that you push and um, it would signal, make a loud noise so that people could find it and everything. And um, it came down to, it was somewhat impractical, the way that they were thinking of doing it, because um, uh, it was going to require the person to buy batteries, insert them into the knife handle. It wasn't going to be 100% reliable or anything else. And so somebody came up with the bright idea of, why don't we just put a whistle on it? And that's how this came about. So it was like, um, you know, keeping it simple uh, made a lot more sense than trying to make it overcomplicated for a survival situation. And while obviously you know me and whistles, uh, if you're going in the woods, you should always have a whistle. This works out great because you also got your, basically your classic SD. It can fit on a keychain, and it's something small enough that you can carry it anywhere and you have a pretty good whistle. Um, according to the specs, uh, the whistle on this is uh, 102 decibels, so I'm pretty certain you can hear it from a pretty decent distance. And what you have also on it is, well, it's a classic SD, so you've got that little classic SD blade, you have your nail file and a little screwdriver, and obviously the scissors. Now, you are lacking a toothpick but you still do have the tweezers so if you wanted to you could always swap out the um, the um, tweezers uh, for um, a toothpick if you wanted to another option if you really thought about it is you could also pop off this scale maybe and put on the uh, scale with the light on there if you wanted to do that I don't know if that would work or not I'm betting it might in any case, these are also somewhat scarce. You're not going to find them everywhere. Um, and they don't show up on eBay that often either. And they basically came out in 2000. I don't know if they are still making them or not. So they are definitely a scarce item, but they are also pretty loud. And what I also know about it is I find you're better off if you're blowing on it with the knife in this uh, in this position with the hole on the bottom instead of the hole on the top. It, it seems like you should be blowing on it this way, but it seems to sound better if you're blowing on it with the knife upside down or even sideways as opposed to this way. So something to think about if you happen to get a hold of a Victorinox whistle knife. And my final little knife for today is the Wenger Pocket Tool Chest. Now this also turned into the Evo 88, so it would have these kind of scales on it if it was an Evo 88. And for all those people out there who are cringing because I'm calling these scales instead of covers, well, you know what? In the world of Victorinox, the red covers on these knives are often called scales. Uh, and it's because they snap onto a liner. And so that's just the way it is. Uh, if you're if you're talking Victorinox knives and you're hanging around people who collect Victorinox knives, get used to them calling the red handles on these things scales. Because as far as they're concerned, they are. Because the uh, the tweezers here, 
and the toothpick are commonly known as scale tools. And so guess what they're getting inserted into? The scales of the knife. Now, this is, like I said, the Victorinox uh, tool chest, the pocket tool chest, and it's a pretty good one. Uh, it's, it's their answer to the uh, Mini Champ, and quite frankly, I think this is a better knife choice for than the Mini Champ. You do have the small blade. This is 65 millimeters also, as opposed to 58 millimeters, so you've got just that extra quarter inch going on with it. So this is like two and a half inches versus two and a quarter inches. And then you all, you have the uh, nail file with the cuticle tip or the uh, cleaner tip. And then over here you have this device, which is your uh, bottle opener, your wire stripper, and small flathead screwdriver. So that's what you have on this side. You flip it over and obviously you got the scissors, which you would expect, but then it also has two other blades that are really helpful. One of them is the micro screwdriver, and we talked about that already. The fact that you can use it for your eyeglasses is really cool, and this actually, I think, also appears on the Opti tool. I wish I could get a hold of one of those, too. And finally, you have a reamer with a sewing awl. So you have a reamer on this, or sewing eye rather. So you have a reamer on your uh, on your uh, pocket tool chest, and it's nice and sharp, and you can actually ream things with it. And the fact that it is in in mounted makes it a really nice tool too. So another tool, well, the op the tool options on this, I feel are better than what you find on the Mini Champ. And while there are only six blades, as opposed to whatever number there are on the other one, I don't know. I just find this one to be much more useful. But in any case, I, I think that's going to wrap it up for my uh, my Swiss Army knife section of uh, this um, Almost Live. Let's move on to something to close the show with. And now for a brief word from our sponsors. Yeah, it's midnight and I'm not famous yet. Trying to win it all with one more bet. Nothing can stop my 32 hopper, my $10 yo yo yo. Welcome to the Volcano Club. Skip the show here. Welcome, all you knife chatters. And have we got a deal for you coming up in June? That's right. My time of Chetty Mondays. That's right. Every Monday. Show up at the Volcano Club, bring your machete, and you're going to get a free Mai Tai. Compliments of Knife Chats with Tobias. What could go wrong? Mai Tais and machetes. My kind of party. Remember, boys and girls, nice full of choices. Choose the Volcano Club. Mai Tai Machete Monday. Knife Chats with Tobias. It's going to be a good one. We now return to our show. I normally don't even think to talk about leg knives. And the, the only reason this is really coming up right now is mainly because a knife detector showed one of these, or a very similar one of these, the uh, Rough Rider Slow Burn uh, Lady's Leg, which is built on the same frame as this one is. But the uh, Slow Burn is only a one-blade uh, knife. It just has the clip blade. It doesn't have the... Uh, Secondary pin blade, which is really a secondary spear point blade, considering how large it is, because this is a five inch frame going on here. And this is in the Stonework series, and that was the main reason I picked it up, is because it was the uh, Stonework series uh, Lady Leg, and I was trying to get everything in the Stonework series. They also have the small Lady's Leg knife, and uh, the reason I thought I would break this one out is because. Um, there was recently a discussion on SMKW Army about these little knives being called ballet knives. Um, and as best I can tell, the the name ballet knife for these uh, the small lady leg knives all traces back to um, Bernard Levine's book. I don't know if it was ever called that by anywhere else uh, other than... Uh, uh, Bernard Levine, 
or Levine, whichever way you want to pronounce it, uh, calling these knives a ballet knife or mentioning that they were known as a ballet knife. Um, he also said that the uh, pattern began life um, with the Utica Knife Company back in the 1930s. And I know for a fact that leg knives uh, were around in the 1800s. Matter of fact, some sources say that a uh, figural knives that featured the entire body uh, traced all the way back to uh, the, the Roman ages, uh, back when the Roman Empire was around. And uh, the lady leg knives could be as old as like the 1700s and stuff, where it was just a figure old lady, a picture of a of a woman's leg. Um, the uh, idea of adding a shoe at the end here uh, as a bottle cap, that might have been the feature that uh, showed up in the 1930s by Utica. Um, so that might be what he was talking about when he said that these knives... Uh, date from uh, the 1930s and Utica was the first company to do that. I really don't know. Um, I'm hoping somebody else out there can correct me and uh, or give us a little bit more information on these le leg knives. But in the meantime, I just wanted to show these two a little bit and uh, talk about them. Um, this one has uh, a lot of beautiful white pearl along with the uh, the um, the turquoise and the uh, Bloody Basin Jasper going on there and also abalone going on there, if you see that. And it's either black pearl or abalone. I believe that uh, the, the darker line, and it actually looks more like black pearl than it does abalone. In any case, uh, it's one of the prettier ones in the Stoneworks line. Unfortunately, this is the very last run of the Stoneworks knives or the the original pattern of Stoneworks knives that came in these boxes. Now they're using malachite instead of a uh, pearl and turquoise. Uh, I'm not even interested in picking those up. But the last run of them had a, a blade edge on them. The earlier ones did not. Um, this was the second release uh, of the... Uh, this was a... They originally had 12 knives in the Stonework series, and then they came out with uh, three or four more afterwards, and this is one of the ones they came out with uh, as an add-on to the original uh, 12 knives in the Stonework series. And this is the big lady leg knife, and uh, you notice uh, got a really nice uh, half-stop on the blade, and you've got the, uh, the nice wedge going on with that wonderful clip blade. And you got a lot of handle to hold on to, so it feels pretty good, too. And like I mentioned, this one has a secondary pin blade, if you want to call that a pin blade. It's really uh, about the same size blade that you find on a canoe. Hold on just a sec. So here's the uh, Stoneworks canoe, and well, let's open up that blade. It's kind of hard to call this blade a, a spear blade and this one a pin blade when... Well, just look at the sizes. They're both basically a spear blade. So this is a spear secondary blade on the uh, big old uh, uh, lady leg knife. And this one obviously just has the small clip blade. And it does not have a half stop because this is before those days where everything had a half stop. But you notice it does have a long straight pull going on there for the match striker pull instead of just your uh your like the uh half moon shape or the thumb pull i like the uh long poles on these they look nicer i think in any case those are the uh two uh lady leg knives and i'm going to adjust the camera just a little bit and we'll see if these boots actually will open a beer bottle now i will tell you straight up that I do have other Rough Rider Lady Leg Knives that will not open a beer bottle. When you put this on there and you go to pull up, it slips right off the uh, the bottle cap. It will not do it, so. And, well, how many times do I need to try? Let's see if the smaller one will work. Uh, we're getting there.
Well, my first impression is no, it will not work. Now I have tried it with the other ones. They also did not work. And really, let's face it, what should be happening is when you try to get that beer bottle open, there should not be a whole lot of effort. You should just be able to get the bottle cap on there and it should just pop off. Uh, so the uh, I don't care what they say, unless you are really good at this or unless you have ground down this edge a little bit so that you get a little bit more lip in there, these are not going to open a bottle of beer straight out of the factory. All right, let's get the camera back down. Okay, so there was the beer bottle test, and you saw that the the shoes on these that are supposed to open a bottle, they're not opening a bottle. Now, if, if they are opening it, and, and you've got proof of them opening it, and you did not modify it at all, um, more power to you. I would love to see a video of you doing it, and I would love to see proof that these actually will open a bottle of beer because uh i this is i've got five of them i've got two in the, the imitation tortoise shell and one in the um in the white smooth bone none of them will open a beer bottle uh, i thought they would but none of them do they look like they will but they just don't do it you need a little bit of a hook there and it's just not there so uh so much for the ladies leg knives and their ability to open a bottle. Um, that's one of the big selling points of them that people always talk about. I don't see it. Um, and well, as long as we're talking uh, stoneworks knives, let me break out another one uh, that is not really a stoneworks knife, but uh, I bought it simply because it's the closest thing to a fixed blade that matches my stoneworks collection. I always like a, a fixed blade to go with uh, with uh, my folding collection. Um, so I've I've got one in my white smooth bone collection. I wanted something that kind of went with the Stoneworks collection, and I, if Rough Rider would come out with something other than that little le little neck knife in the uh, Stoneworks collection, I would eat it up right away. But uh, they didn't have one, so I want to grab the uh, Howling Wolf Skinner by United. And I've had, this is actually a birthday present for me uh, many, many years ago, probably a good uh, eight, nine years ago. And uh, it's got a, a nice dark brown pack of wood handle. You got the uh, Bloody Basin Jasper uh, in there and then uh, the uh, imitation turquoise going on. And it's just a little uh, wide belly skinner. See there, it's called the uh, Frontier Knives. Nice heavy leather sheath. The knife is also out of China, and as you can tell, it's by United Cutlery. And we see here the uh, the number UC2705-440 stainless. It's got a nice, nice uh, little blade there with a beautiful hollow ground going on. Uh, United Cutlery there, 0160. I don't know if these were a numbered set or what, but really a nice uh nice little knife i like the um the uh factory file work along the top which acts a little bit as jimping but you can actually slide your hand across it but if you press down it really grabs into there i don't know it's just a, a nice little knife you got a little lanyard hole in the back there and you, you can actually whack down on stuff like that so if you wanted to maybe break some ice for a drink you could probably use it for that or Whatever you want it to do with it, but uh, feels nice in the hand, and uh, well, I just thought it would look nice with uh, my uh, other knives with uh, some kind of turquoise going on with them, and that's why I ended up picking up the uh, Howling Wolf Skinner, and again, really nice thick leather sheath, and with a little feather detail going on there too, and if you didn't see it there before. Howling Wolf. So that was by United Cutlery. So at least one fixed blade showed up in uh, this month's uh, May Almost Live. Uh, let's move on. And uh, well, now I guess it is time to truly 
close the show. But before I say goodbye, I wanted to show you one more time the uh, the Marbles Ram's Horn knife and the uh, the blade etch that's on the blade. Um, it has not changed at all in the last two months. I forgot to mention it in April, but you see it there. It has not changed at all. The knife um, is remaining pretty much the same as when I first got it. And uh, what's interesting is uh, I gave one of these knives to uh, one of my sons uh, about a year and a half, two years ago. And uh, I saw his the other day. The blade edge is still there. And he uses his constantly. Um, I mean, truly constantly, every day, cutting up boxes and everything else imaginable. It, so... I have a feeling these uh, blade etches last a whole lot better than uh, we think. In any case, now, so long for May. Uh, time to go work on uh, the June Almost Live. And that brings us to the conclusion of another exciting episode of Knife Chats with Tobias Almost Live. If you liked what you saw, Give us that thumbs up and leave us a comment. We always like to hear from you here at Knife Chats with Tobias. And don't forget to subscribe and ring that notification bell so you'll know when the next exciting episode of Knife Chats with Tobias is up and running. But thanks again and we'll see you soon.